Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis and I'm coming to you live from beautiful Galicia, Spain. And we're about to enter into a new month on God's calendar. It is the month of Av. And this is the month in biblical history where the children of Israel had to make a decision. Were they going to follow the spies in unbelief? Or were they going to believe the Lord and enter into their promised land? So even as we think about this year of the door, there may be many doors before us, but when we put the door of all doors, Jesus, first in our life, He orders our steps and all the doors following simply fall into place as we follow Him. So we can rest and be encouraged. So enjoy the chalkboard teaching and thanks so much for watching. Blessings. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Av. And Av is the fifth month on God's spiritual calendar. And if you've been tracking along with us, we just walked through the month of Tammuz. We went through the open door that not only was a new month, but began a whole new season, the season of summer. And, you know, we opened our physical doors, we opened our physical eyes, and we were encouraged encouraged by the Lord to look and look again and see things from his heavenly perspective and see with our spiritual eyes. And so now here in the month of Av, the Lord is focusing our attention on yet another one of our senses, and that is our hearing. And so just as there are many things out there vying for the attention of our eyes, there are just as many voices bidding for us to lend them our ears, right? So the question is, whose voice will we listen to? And whose voice can we and should we believe? Well, we can know this, that God is not an author of confusion, but he is a God of peace and clarity. And you know, we don't have to look much further than Av itself, because Av is the Hebrew root word for Abba, and that means father in Hebrew. So I sense the Lord saying this, be still before me and you will hear the voice of your heavenly Father, for it will rise up above all of the others. For my sheep know my voice, so listen to me, for my words are spirit and life. And believe me and follow me, and I will shepherd you safely into your promised land, all because of my great love for you. Well, my name is Christine Vallis, and I'm blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you here in real time. So thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that you are blessed by this teaching. So as we begin the chalkboard teaching here, we will talk about and understand that it's in this very month of Av in biblical history when the Israelites were just like us. They were hearing many voices and receiving all different kinds of reports and it left them with a decision. It left them with a choice as to whose report they should believe. So if you want to look at this account, check it out in the Bible. It's found in Numbers 13 and 14 because it's right here in this very month of Av when the 12 spies returned after 40 days of surveying the promised land. And as we recall the story, they all saw the same land, but 10 of them came back and gave a bad report, while two came back and gave a good one. So when we read that story and we put ourselves in the story, we want to be like Joshua and Caleb, right? We want to be the good guys, the good spies, with the good eyes and the good report, right? We don't want to be like the other ten. But let's look at this because the sin of the ten spies was in their speaking. They declared the evil report and they caused fear and doubt amongst all the people. And we don't want to be like the Israelites either because Israel's sin was in their hearing. They refused to hear the truth and they even tried to silence and shut 
down the good news and they attempted to stone Joshua and Caleb. And so ultimately the Israelites did not listen to the good report. They refused to go forward and they even sought a new leader to take them all the way back to Egypt to take them back to slavery. They hardened their hearts. They believed what their senses told them. And in the end, they settled in unbelief. And as Numbers 14, 22 says, they saw his glory, they saw the miracles, but they didn't hearken to his voice. So this day that the spies returned was on the 9th of Av. And this also concludes a period that we've been in called Between the Straits. And so on the 9th of Av, when that period ends, let's be reminded that this day, the 9th of Av, was always meant to be a blessing. This was a day they were to move forward. They were to advance. They were to go in and possess the land that God had promised them. But you know what? That blessing turned to a curse, all because of their unbelief. And many ramifications resulted. Those 40 days of spying out the promised land turned into 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and death in the desert for that unbelieving generation. And this unbelief also led to a cycle of calamities in Israel's history where both temples were destroyed on the 9th of Av. And even in modern history, the Jews were expelled from England, Spain, and even the Gaza Strip all on the very same day, all on the 9th of Av, and all because of unbelief. Well, as I've been studying God's calendar, I've noticed that we can expect the enemy to try to come against us in the very area where God is encouraging us in. So we can anticipate that the enemy will try to oppose our hearing because the devil knows that our faith, our belief comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Romans 10, 17. But he also knows that our unbelief comes by hearing, and that's hearing anything that opposes or is contrary to the word of God. So the enemy knows this, but the question is, do we know this? Hosea says that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So the Lord is highlighting this to us so that we can be aware, so that we can know. And again, he's reminding us this month of the importance of guarding our heart. Proverbs 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart. And we guard our heart. Um, last month, we've learned by guarding our eyes. And even now, this month, by guarding our our ears. And speaking of guarding, I'm also reminded that he has equipped us with the full armor of God. Talks about this in Ephesians 6 and in verse 16 it says, above all else, again, we are to take up the shield of faith. And that shield of faith comes by hearing. And it's hearing his word. And that is what quenches the fiery darts, the evil reports of the wicked one. So whose report will we believe? Are we listening to the 10 spies network that stir up anxiety and fear? Or are we listening to reliable, like-minded sources that have a different spirit than the world? Because we have to evaluate everything we hear up against the surety of God's word. And his report is always good and it is never one of fear. And you know, sadly, many believers are not convinced that God even speaks today. And if they do, most think that they don't really actually have the ability to hear God for themselves. And they often look to other stronger believers to hear Him. And they're really hearing God secondhand. But it doesn't have to be that way because the reality is the Lord is always speaking. And we have all been created with the ability to hear God. And we will recognize and hear His voice the more we hang out with Him, the more we create an environment to hear him. And so God speaks to us in many ways, primarily through his word, but even all of creation 
testifies that there's a God, so no one is without excuse. Even after Adam and Eve sinned back in Genesis, they still had the ability to hear God. So how much more us, his children? He says, my sheep hear my voice, so we can hear him. And again, it all goes back to Av, our Abba, father because he desires our hearts to be established in him and even this word of also means to will or desire and the lord's desire is for not only for us to hear him but for us to believe him and to choose him as our abba father and so he's given us this gift of free will so it's our choice and that's when it's real right when we choose for ourselves and so that picture of the choice is even connected with the Hebrew letter connected to this month it is the Hebrew letter tet here in the bottom corner of the chalkboard and it's basically a picture of life or death so as Joshua says choose this day whom you will serve whom you will hear whom you will believe and so when we choose him as our Abba, the word says in John 1 that he gives us the right to become children of God. And in Romans 8, it says that we are no longer slaves under a spirit of fear, but rather under a spirit of sonship where we cry, Abba, Father. And so if you've never chosen him, if you've never believed upon Jesus, I encourage you to do so because it is the most important decision that you can ever make. And it is the best decision that you can ever make. And so when we become born again, we have this relationship with God restored. We are rightly related to him, but we want to be more than just merely related to God. We want to have a relationship with him, right? We want that father and child relationship. And so that is ours to develop. He gives us that ability. And so that is eternal life. That is knowing God, not only when we die, but here and now. So in real time, the Lord is reminding us that we don't have to fear the ninth of Av and we don't have to fear the giants. All we have to do is believe. We have to believe him and we call ourselves believers, right? So let's believe and not say no, Lord, because that's an oxymoron. So let's believe the Lord because our unbelief limits God. It's right in the Old Testament, Psalm 78 verse 41 that records this very time in history where Israel stood at the edge of their promised land, but they limited the Holy One of Israel because of their unbelief. And even in the New Testament, in Mark 6, Jesus himself could not do any miracles in his hometown because of their unbelief. So the question arises, why do we hesitate to believe God? Even as believers, why aren't we not believing him fully? And I think the reason is the same reason why the Israelites harden their heart towards him. I believe the root cause of our unbelief is a lack of love. Because Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. So that means love is the driving force behind our faith. And so I think a lot of us often think that we just have to try harder to believe. But no, what we really need is a fresh revelation of his love for us. This is key. That's why Ephesians 3 encourages us to be rooted and grounded in his love and to never stop growing in his love. So if there's an area of unbelief or of fear in our hearts, that's like an indicator flashing that we don't have a fresh revelation of of his love for us in that area and all we have to do is ask the Lord to show us how much he loves us in that area and he will because he delights in revealing himself and his great love to us and his perfect love casts out all fear so the more we know we're loved 
the more we will believe him and trusting him will just flow automatically and we'll follow him anywhere because our hearts have been established, rooted and grounded in his love. And a little side note, there's even a holiday here in the middle of the month of Av. It's on the 15th of Av, on the full moon, and it actually celebrates God's great love for us. In Israel, it's kind of celebrated like a Valentine's Day, but it's rooted in God's great love for us. So let's enter into the 15th of Av, celebrating his love. So now we may not be physically standing at the edge of our promised land, but we are still charged to go in and possess the land that he has given us. And that land is the land of his promises that he died to give us. In Hebrews 8, 6, it tells us that we are now under a new and better covenant that's established on better promises. And Corinthians 1, 20 goes on to say that all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ unto the glory of God by us. That means they are ours for the taking. And in Deuteronomy 11, it kind of amplifies this point, saying that no man will be able to stand before you in all of the land where you tread your feet upon. <laughs> so that means we have to possess them. We have to receive them by faith. And that reminds me of the Hebrew word Shema, which is found here on the chalkboard, and that means to hear. But it just doesn't doesn't mean to listen, it means to understand, to trust, and to act on what we have heard. Because we can get the best counsel, we can have all the promises of God, but it profits us nothing if we don't act on them, right? So let's listen to what James says and be hearers and doers of the word. Let's hear God's word and mix it with faith, mix it with belief, being rooted and grounded, knowing that we are loved. And now we may not be seeing giants with our physical eyes, but there are many other types of giants that many of us face, like fear and lies and the lust of even our own flesh. But let's be encouraged because God has equipped us with every thing we need to go in and possess the land and receive our inheritance. So we can drive out that giant of fear by receiving a fresh revelation of his love. As we talked about, 1 John 4.18 says, perfect love casts out fear. And we can pull out the lies of the enemy by renewing our mind with the word of God, as it talks about in Romans 12, because lies steal our inheritance and the truth sets us free. So every lie we root out brings us more freedom and we take more ground day by day. And Romans 8 tells us that as we walk by the Spirit in our promised land, we will put to death the deeds of the flesh. So that will give us the ability to sow good seeds into our promised land that will produce much fruit. So it's really all about possessing the truth, the truth about who God really is, his true nature, the truth of his word, the truth of who we are in him, and the truth of his great love for us. And the more we possess these truths, the more we will become fully persuaded and established in his love. And the more we will just drive out the enemy and possess the abundant life that Jesus talks about. And we don't do this alone. It is not in our own strength or might, but it is by his spirit within us, says the Lord. So let's shima the good report of the Lord, knowing we are loved by him and go in and possess the land of promises that he has for us. So now as we look to the chalkboard, even the tribe this month highlights our hearing, and that is the tribe of Simeon. And he is the second child born to Jacob and Leah, and his name actually means gracious hearing, but if you study out his life, you would think he was hard of hearing because after Jacob's firstborn, Reuben, 
lost his inheritance, Simeon was the next in line. But we read in Genesis 36 that he lost it because Simeon, along with Levi, took vengeance on their sister's defilement. Simeon had no discernment. He basically had zeal without knowledge. And he was like Proverbs 25, 28 that says he was a broken down city without walls because he could not rule over his own spirit. So there are many lessons that we can learn from Simeon, but as believers, we don't have to muster up our own self-control. All we have to do is draw upon the self-control that is within us. It is one of the fruit of the Spirit, and his self-control will manifest in our lives. That's why I often say we are better off than we think. We already have his self-control. We just have to use it. Now, many of us would probably encourage Simeon to take heed, right? And that phrase actually literally means to listen to your father, to listen to the expert before making decisions. So let's trust and rest in our Heavenly Father's word, for he is our great defender. Now, as we move into the land of our promises, if we listen, we will hear the roar of the Lion of Judah. And this is connected to the constellation that is associated here with the biblical month of Av. It is the constellation Leo. We are not talking about astrology. We are talking about astronomy because the stars declare the glory of the Lord and they all point to Jesus. So our Heavenly Father roars over us like this lion here roaring over his cubs. He wants us to know that he has our back so we can trust him. He will guide us and he will protect us. And so, you know, the enemy always has a counterfeit. And in 1 Peter 5, we see that it says the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But but he is not a lion at all. What he actually is, is a liar. So he may roar and everything, but he is a gummer. He has no teeth. The reality is he has no power. The only power he has is the power that we give him. So let's be sober and vigilant and submit to God and agree with what God says about who he is and who we are in him and stand in that identity. And that is how we resist the enemy and he will flee. And even Proverbs 28 tells us this, that the righteous are as bold and courageous as a lion. So let's be encouraged in our true identity. Now there's even a star in this constellation of Leo and it points to our secured victory in Jesus. It's the star that actually makes up the foot of the lion and it's seen crushing the head of the serpent. And that of course is a picture of the messianic prophecy talked about in Genesis 3.15. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and he did. It is finished. So the enemy's defense has departed him. So let's advance with confidence from our true position of victory. So lastly, you would think the body part associated with this month would be our ears, but actually it is our kidneys up here in the corner of the chalkboard. And so we can gain some insight here with this correlation from Psalm 16 verse 7 that says, I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My kidneys instruct me in the night season. So in the physical, our kidneys filter our blood. They keep the good things in and they filter out the bad. So I believe that this is referring to our spiritual filtration system and that is our discernment. And discernment means the ability to judge well. Not only does his word give us health to our bones, but they also give us discernment and good judgment. And Psalm 119 boasts the many benefits of God's word. And then verses 98 through 100 says, your commandments make me wiser than my enemies and smarter than my teachers. They are my meditation. 
They are what I listen to. They are what I think about. They are what I hear. They are what I act upon. And because I keep them, I can discern more than my elders. Wow. So the more that we are in God's word and the more God's word gets into us, the more discernment we will have and the more we will grow and make good and godly decisions. And I'm also reminded that the word says that we have the mind of Christ. But how do we access this? Well, Romans 12, again, we become transformed by the renewing of our mind. 1 Corinthians 14 also says this, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but he speaks to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. And that word mysteries means the counsels of God. So that means we can access the mind of Christ by praying in the spirit, because it not only declares the perfect will of God, but it actually draws the mind of Christ and the very counsels of God up and out of his spirit within us. So in closing, who will believe the report of the Lord? We all do, don't we? We all want to believe him in our hearts. So let's position ourselves to hear him and let's believe what God is saying, not what's being said all around us. And let's take heed to our heavenly father and let's rest in his word over us. And let's choose to believe our Abba Father and go with his good report because his word has been tested and tried and proven and it's even higher than his own name. So he can be trusted. His word can be trusted because it will stand forever. And finally, let's get a fresh revelation of his great love for us because this is the foundation of everything. His love gives us confidence. And when we know in our knower that we are his beloved, who can be against us? So let's not stop now. Let's move forward. Let's advance and let's possess the land of his better promises that are yes and amen and are ours for the taking. So thank you, Abba. Thank you, Lord that you not only rejoice when we hear your voice, but you delight in hearing ours. So Lord, draw us ever closer as your daughters and as your sons. We are blessed to call you Abba. So if any man has ears, let him hear and let us go forth into this awesome month of Av with our Abba Father. And thanks for listening. Be blessed.